Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name is Brad. I'm Deb. And today's video is not going to be about Piney Grove, but it's going to be about that transition from our coastal life to the country life. And what we found was some archive footage from last year when we were out here on the dock working on it. And I was working and changing the bunk boards on our boat lift, and Deb was giving me a hard time about it. And we were just going through the footage this morning, and we really think you'll enjoy this video. It's not exactly Piney Grove video, but it is part of that transition. Absolutely. That lovely assistant Deb is filming. I don't know if she's actually going to uh, be on camera today. Oh no, she is not going to be on camera today. No? I'm gonna nope. go get the boards. But these are bunk boards, and this is what your boat sits on on a boat lift. There's one on each side, they're 12 foot long. It's just a two by six. Uh, for bigger boats, it could be a two by eight or a two by 12, or they could be doubled. And this is a really, really light boat, but for this size lift, uh, two by six on edge, 12 foot long. Well, there's really nothing wrong with the lift, but what's wrong with the bunk boards is these brackets right here. These are galvanized steel brackets. This boat lift was built in 2000, so 21 years ago it was built and they've lasted this long, but you can see on the bottom, it's completely rusted off of this one and um, it's getting ready to on the other one. And once I get that off, putting it back together will be relatively easy. I'm gonna use the boat as a platform to work from. So these boat lift motors, when Hurricane Michael came through in 2018, a category five storm, we had the boat all the way up at the top of the boat lift and the water came somewhere around here. So my motors didn't actually go underwater, but they got enough water in them that uh, they quit working. So the insurance actually covered the motors and I installed them myself. So we've got new motors, we've got new switches, and uh, we redid the electrical to the dock. And we redid the decking on the dock and the support underneath the decking. So the last thing to do is um, fix this boat lift. So you'll see that the bunks, especially in the back end, are in bad shape, but I will reuse that two by six. <laughs> I might reuse this carpet. Again, waste not, what not. The first thing I'm gonna try to do is take some of these bolts off that aren't completely rusted. Some of the bolts are so rusted, you're not gonna be able to get a socket on them. You can see that bolt was just about gone. That bolt's still good. I'll use that for something. Probably put it back on this lift. <laughs> if you've ever worked on docks or worked on things around the water, you're gonna lose something to the water. <laughs> That's actually still a good piece of steel. What would you possibly reuse that for? <laughs> Disc carrow brakes, you need a piece of steel to weld on. Oh, uh, there you go. So on this one, the bottom bolt's already gone. It rusted off. So you've stirred up the wasps. Really, is there a wasp yep, somewhere? Yeah, there's a wasp on on your head, on your hat, on top really? of your hat. Okay. Like that. It's on your hat. It's still on your hat, okay. Yeah, we never know what order videos will get posted. There will be a video where I get stung. Let's hope it's not this one too. <laughs> hmm. Oh, one on me. See that red dot? Red dot. The hornet came. I thought I swatted him away. But I guess he saw a patch of skin between my shirt and my glove, and he came in hot. Oh, he's back on your hat, honey. I know it here. The kerplunk of success. Three down, one to go. So besides the fact that I don't want to waste and use new carpet, that's probably, I don't know, $50 worth of new carpet. It's special marine grade carpet. But secondly, um, I don't like putting things in the landfill that don't need to be there. And this carpet is nylon and it's in good shape. Why not reuse it? And it'll keep it from going in the landfill. I think I remember you stapling these years ago with the electric stapler. Yep, I think I remember that too. Probably wasn't a fun experience for you, was it? <laughs> well, the electric stapler was probably super cool. Being micromanaged on where I put the staples, probably not so cool. Yeah. 
I don't see them evenly spaced. Well, that's why he thinks I did it, because they're not evenly spaced. Well, you are definitely the more um, particular out of the two of us. If you know anyone, I got some slightly used boat lift <laughs> bunk board brackets for sale. I'll let them go cheap. Super cheap. Thought you are going to use them on the farm. I'll part with them. For the right price? For the right price, and somebody desperately needs them. Such a giver. I'm a team player. Such a giver. Brad mentioned earlier that this um, dock had been redecked. It was um, early on in the pandemic that we redecked it. And um, we feed ducks out here and birds in those feeders. And that feeder. And corn, they'll flip corn out and they'll get it on the dock. And it'll get stuck in these little holes. And uh, apparently the possums and the raccoons take it upon themselves to dig out the corn. So as a result, we have little scratchy marks all over our new decked dock. When Deb and I recarpeted these bunks, we must not have liked how rough the wood was. So we got some of those rubber baseboards like you see in a commercial building and we cut them into strips and we glued them onto these boards. And uh, that may be why this carpet's in good shape because it wasn't against that rough board. But uh, we're going to put these back on. It was a great idea. <laughs> that we've forgotten about. And again, recycling is the theme of the day. We found this knife <laughs> at a place where we fished. So this has been recycled as well. <laughs> there, there's not much else to that story. We found it. It was free. The end. Okay, so I laid the old board on top of the two new boards. And I figure rather than trying to drill them while they're on top of the I-beam, I'll go ahead and pre-drill them. And... Uh, the holes will be set. Just kind of making the hole a little bit wider so the bolt won't be quite as tight a fit. Ooh, look again, a man reading directions. I love that. Myth debunked. Don't use a flat washer. Lock washer, there. That makes sense. Does it? Brackets must be a little different because the holes don't line up exactly. Uh oh. Yeah, these are farther away from the bend. So one hole will work, the other one won't. Okay, so Bradford's been doing some ciphering and some figuring and some uh, staging, and he has figured out where the brackets should go. The brackets are a little different than the brackets that were pulled off. He's got the back one set up. And he's now putting on the front ones. I can reuse one of the holes, but the brackets are a little bit wider, so we're gonna have an extra, extra, extra hole. hole. We're gonna have a little bit of character in our <laughs> boat lift, bunk board. I'm sure the new owners will not even notice. <laughs> nope, they probably will not. So I gotta lift the front of the boat more than the back. That's in the third hole there. We'll put it in the fifth hole here. And you're lifting the front higher than the back. Why? For drainage? The boat lift comes up level. Yep. And you want the water to drain to the drain hole in the boat. What's that called? Well, it's called a drain, call drain hole. So I guess it's a drain <laughs> hole, right? <laughs> That's what I would have called it. It pays to do it yourself, but sometimes a job takes a bit longer than you anticipate. I think always a job takes longer than you anticipate. Than me or people in general? Well, I know for sure you, but I think probably people in general. If you don't have ratchet wrenches, you should get some because these things are gold. Just doing a temp, just tightening it a little bit. And until I get all the holes, the new holes drilled, um, I won't tighten it all the way down. But it's looking good so far. Nice new boards, shiny new brackets. So while Deb was at the house, uh, I put a bracket on wrong. And so I had to redo it with the torque wrench. Well, not the torque wrench, but the impact wrench to, for the final tightening. She's pretty much where she's gonna be right now.
what you're doing now. Squaring up. So it looked a little not straight to me as far as look like maybe the edge of the two by six was leaning. And if it's on an edge like that, that means your boat is gonna ride on that edge instead of that flat area there. So I'm just squaring these up. Final tightening. All the brackets are squared up. So the final tightening and then cover up the bunks. We found adhesive so we can glue our rubber baseboard versus stapling it. And it's just a nice smooth surface for the boat to ride on under the carpet so you don't get these ragged edges of the two by four in the wood. We'll start at one end and stretch it as we go. Final step. Staple, staple. Looks a lot better with the board plain and black. He's not getting seasick on that. Oh, it's swinging back and forth. Home stretch, home stretch. I think that wraps up this project. Seems sad to get them wet. They're all pretty and new. brackets underwater there they go come a little dumb boat she is back on her safe little comfy home Hopefully you found that video enjoyable. It was enjoyable for us to take a look back. It was a year ago, so we got to see ourselves a year ago out here working on the dock. And it's also an important piece of the puzzle for moving out to the country. So if you like today's video, give us a thumbs up and a like, comment, we'd love to hear from you, and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I think that's all we got. Yeah, I think that's all we got. Take care out there, y'all. Take care.